I am a self-taught artist. And so everything that I've learned from my art practice over the years has really come from a lot of trial and a lot of mistakes and a lot of error. Art itself is a very expensive exercise. And I suppose when I look back at my art career, I could have saved myself a lot of time and effort and really money in the long run if I'd just taken the plunge and enrolled myself um, either by doing a number of professional art classes or finding the right kind of mentor or coach to kind of guide me through my own art process. Similarly, when I think about customer experience, I think that working with an independent professional CX company can really act as a catalyst to fast track a business's CX goals as well as fast track the business's kind of overall business outcomes. When I first started my career as a professional artist, I started off working with acrylic paint. And acrylic is a lot cheaper than working in oils. So I'd start with acrylic, I would paint these massive big pieces, and I would literally throw paint against the canvas and kind of hope that something stuck. I would then go through a process of kind of fiddling and faffing, trying to find the form, trying to find the composition, and ultimately, you know, trying to make the whole painting work. And again, um, I could have really just saved myself a lot of time and a lot of effort if I'd done some planning. The biggest difference is that customer experience is all about emotions. So although our customer experiences need to remain fluid, I think that it's absolutely critical to really articulate how we want our customers to feel when they do business with us. Art can be messy at times. And I've actually had to line my whole studio with drop sheets. Inevitably, the paint gets everywhere. On the floor, on my walls, sometimes even on the ceiling. And when I'm actually painting, Sometimes I actually just roll up my sleeves because I get so caught up in the moment that I can't find the right paintbrush. And I roll up my sleeves and sometimes I even paint with my hands and my fingers. Every good customer-led initiative is going to kind of unpack and reveal um, certain areas of risk and certain areas of opportunity. Your CX initiatives cannot just be a tick box exercise. There are going to be improvements that have to be made in order to drive customer loyalty and mitigate churn. So you have to start implementing those um, improvement suggestions. You are going to have to roll your sleeves up and yes, you are going to have to get your hands dirty. The two different mediums of acrylic and oil paint are absolutely different and they react differently on the canvas. So there were a number of kind of key principles or rules that I had to learn to ensure that, um, to ensure that all this hard work and effort that I was putting into my painting wouldn't have gone to waste. Because if you don't get the rules right, the paint can actually crack. So when I think back at the rules, and there are many, the first is to start with an underpainting. And this allows me to kind of get a feel of where I want the painting to go and the general kind of composition. So from a business perspective, you need to start to think about getting your CX composition right, even if it's just in broad brush strokes. Where would you like your focal point to be? What is going to be your subject matter in terms of experience? How are you going to make the shapes and the forms all work together into a kind of holistic whole? So my suggestion would be to um, really get some feedback from your internal key stakeholders. And if you're lucky enough, feedback from your external customers. 
so that you can see where the tweaks and the changes are needed um, before really kind of rolling out your CX improvement strategy. The second principle is that you have to paint slow drying paint over fast drying paint. So I use a lot of different kind of mediums and solvents when I first start to put my first layers of oil paint onto my canvases. When I think about CX improvements, this is about having a look at some of the quick wins, some of those improvement opportunities that dry quicker. And once those have dried, you then start to add those layers that are going to drive slower. So those improvement suggestions that will take longer to implement and longer to really kind of take hold within your organization. The next principle is fat over lean. So every additional layer um, that you add in your painting has to be fatter and more flexible than the previous layer. So when you think about CX improvements, each iterative improvement needs to be fatter and more flexible and really build on the work that you've done to date. Lastly, and I personally really battle with this, is to paint quickly, but to varnish slowly. When you varnish a painting, it really makes the whole composition come together and really makes that painting pop. But once you varnished, there's no going back. There's no ways that you can make any changes. There's no ways that you can kind of fiddle and make the painting work. So when you think about the CX improvements that are gonna come out of your customer-led initiatives, it's about making those improvements quickly. But then wait and see, how are those improvements evolving? How are those improvements getting better? How are you gonna measure the success of those improvements? Take a step back, see what's happening before you absolutely set those improvements and kind of cast them into stone as such. Lastly, as an artist, I have learned that the painting process is a long one and the actual oil paints take an incredibly long time to dry. I thoroughly enjoy my work as a CX practitioner and I thoroughly enjoy my work as an artist. And what I absolutely have come to understand is that both of those practices is definitely a blend of artistic ability and creative thinking and really underpinned by scientific methodology in order to make it work.